Today, in the first of a two-part series, I'll show you how I took this T800 Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator 2 bus from Sanic 3D and turned it into something uniquely mine. And what's more, no sanding. Well, there was on the base, but not the face. In part two, I'll take you through the painting of it, as long as I don't mess it up too much. But for part one, I'll take you through the blender modifications I made to it, um, the design of this little low profile stand that I made, the, the print setup, and then uh, a closer look at the final print itself. So sit back and relax and enjoy the highs and a few little lows of this new project that I'm doing. So you be you and I'll be crack. Sorry, I couldn't resist that pun. Um, but if you're a fan of a cheesy pun like I am, then make sure to like and subscribe. And don't let your comments hide as well, because the support for my last two videos, especially the alien head one, has been incredible. I can't believe it. So thank you so much, guys. It's so appreciated. So to quickly explain, this is the second time I've actually printed and then painted this um, this bust. Uh, the first one, I it was going really well. I uh, overpainted it though, uh, tried to go back a few steps and take some paint off it and then it went really badly so I tried to strip the whole thing um, back to primer and it just melted pretty much. He looked like a mill from Robocop rather than Arnie. So that was take one, um, or T1, um, and this is T2, my very own judgement day if you will. Um, I'm just going to caveat as well that I'm no expert in Blender, I know enough to muddle through and I really enjoy playing around in it even though I make loads of mistakes as you'll see. Um, but hopefully, you know, that's like you guys as well. You, you know, I'm, I dare say um, there's a lot of professionals out there that might look what I'm doing and say, this guy's an idiot, and they'd be right. But hopefully there's people out there that are trying to inspire to at least get your, get your hands dirty and, and give it a go. Um, anyway, so if you're ready, let's crack on. Right, so this is gonna be very strange for me, so bear with me, I'm going to try and narrate as I do this. And talking and doing things is a little bit strange for me, so please, Please um, go easy. Um, so import SDL, let's go find the SDL you want. Import, I've got screen capture key, key, key tracker thingy on, so hopefully I don't need to tell, say too much about what keys I'm doing. So anyway, we want to get this life size. So just going to rotate that 90 degrees. And then I'm just going to measure it for you. So as you can see, it's 103 millimeters wide, which should be 203 millimeters, apparently, for a life-size head. So let's scale it up. Click and hold across there. And I do happen to know that 1.95 is pretty much perfect for the bamboo A1, with a little, you know, using as much space as you can and getting enough of the neck to act as a bit of a stand. So to show that, I'm just gonna add a mesh which has come in at 256 already because I've got an open program, but you might have to type 256 down the bottom here. And to show everybody that this can actually fit on the bamboo, as you can see. Although, at the moment, it looks like he's cutting his chin off, so what we're gonna do is just select him. Move this pivot point to the somewhere a little bit more easier to use by origin to geometry. Let's move it there. Just gonna rotate it on the x-axis again. And I'm looking at the top of the head, the top of the hair, I should say, where it's a little bit flat, to make sure that's gonna be within the build plate. And then I wanted to go right up to the top to get as much neck as I could because I want to cut the bottom off because no offense at all to Sanix 3D because this is an incredible SDL. Um, this uh, bottom bit was just a bit too big for my liking and meant that I had to print the whole thing in three pieces and deal with all the um, joining of it and smoothing of the gaps. And I'm too lazy to do that, you see. So once you're happy that you've got it big enough, oh, as you can see, you might just be poking out there. And I might just a bit, oh yeah, you can see it's very slightly, so I just need to move that down a little bit. Okay, so so I'm happy with this. So instead of cutting it now and sending it just straight to uh, Bamboo Studio, I want to hollow it out first, um, but I want to hollow out the whole model, and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to select the, S the, the item, 
that you want to export or export STL and make sure you put selection only else it will send everything else within the, the file over to and as the SDL and over, which you would open in other programs and you wouldn't want that. So I just need to find out where this is. I'm going to call it just head because I've already done this. Um, oh no, I'm going to call it scaled and export. And then it's over to Lubin. So you don't need to import in Lubin. You can literally just open, go to the file that you want. That was the one that I just made, I believe. And don't need to do much in Lubin. I just want to go to mesh, hollow, and get that's 10 mil. You can go with that if you want. I'm just going to be even more, um, not risky, but just trying to limit the amount of time for printing. So I'm going to go with 7 mil. Let that run. Usually takes a few seconds. And as you can see, it opens up a completely separate file. And it adds and hollow to the end. That makes things nice and easy to keep track of. You do have to export for an um, STL from here. So you want to just, I'm just going to overwrite the one I had existing. Yeah, let's replace. And then back to Blender. So once in Blender, we've got the original one that isn't hollowed. I'm just going to hide that. I'm going to import the hollowed STL that uh, it should be that one. Uh, that's the correct time. Yeah, that is the one. And what you'll see is if you just want to check how it looks, you can see that there's the the wall cavity, and there is the hollow interior of Arnie's head. Not that Arnold Schwarzenegger has a hollow head. He's actually a very intelligent person. Um, no offence, Arnie. Don't get angry with me, please. Um, so yeah, we're just going to cut the head off again. Sorry, Arnie. I'm going to use the cube because it's perfectly positioned as it's the same cube we were using before. And all you need to do is click edit. If you don't see edit, what you need is to come over to your preferences and search for bool and make sure that bool tool is clicked on. And I always get this wrong. I think you cut, you, sorry, you select the cutting object and then the object you want to keep. And because I want to keep where they meet each other, it's, you do the intersect, as you can see by the little icon. Give it a few seconds to process. And there you go. And the reason why I took it to Lubin first is because then you get this. If we cut it before taking it to Lubin, you would have um, a base here a closed off base and which would be just something you don't need to print so now i'm happy with that we can export the stl make sure it's selected only i'm going to call it just head as i've already done this and then it's over to bamboo studio so once you're in bamboo studio you can just import as you usually would and to make give yourself a little bit more room you can rotate on the z-axis by 45 degrees and that gives a bit more room for any supports you might need. So make sure that all your settings are as you want them to be. I went for the one point, sorry, the 0 0.12 millimeter high quality because you know it's going to take a long time. But when I did it before at a low at a lower quality, um, there was just too much finishing, and you can see this detail on the skin. When I had to sand some layer lines off, that it would take that detail away from it which meant we had flat stop spots on the on the nose where the detail and the skin had uh, been obliterated. So we don't want that. And the only settings I changed really, I obviously made sure that I'm using my calibrated um, uh, profile for the, the for the PLA. Man, talking and doing stuff is, is difficult. <laughs> so sorry, I will waffle on like mad. You can turn on ironing if the item had um, flat spots, I think that would require ironing um, strength and speed I didn't touch enable supports you'd obviously need to do that I always go with tree slim and build plate only that was just build plate only just means that if there's anything supported here it's not trying to grow a support from part of the model onto another part of the model which could damage it in different ways also what I found <coughs> excuse me also which I found if you're at 0.12 mil um, layer height then to change this to around double 
and this one to around double. And this means the supports are very easy to take off. And also, I'm going to put a, like a 10, uh, outer brim only of 10, no, 15 mil to just keep everything nicely attached to the build plate. But I have got a uh, cool plate super tack now. Um, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue, but I still just do it anyway. So click preview. So that took about three minutes or so, but aren't you glad that I uh, skipped past that and didn't just sit here in silence? Anyway, give, give everything a nice check over to make sure you're happy. Um, looks like we do, we're going at two days and 12 hours. So quite a long time, but the quality is fantastic. As you can see, you're really not going to see much of the printing lines at all. So let's get printing. Okay, so this next bit was about an hour's long, but I've sped it up greatly. To So uh, you don't have to watch me pressing about and not really knowing what I'm doing. Basically, I just wanted a low profile stand um, and I wanted to just have a nice little interesting shape to it. But also I wanted something around his neck to act as a bit of an interface rather than it, 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 on his head just literally sitting on top of a flat um, rectangle shape of some kind. So I'm just mucking about trying to get a few little slopes and a few angles. Um, I made the collar bit by just uh, selecting the, the edges around the bottom of his neck and, and duplicating that so that you'd get a really nice sort of organic shape around the neck which would sit nicely on top of the flat top of the main part of the base and look pretty interesting. So again, just trying a few bevels and a few random angles and slopes to the shapes to give it a little bit of interest. And what I'm planning on doing is actually just sitting the head permanently on top of this, not actually affixing it to it. Um, so I had to have like a little bit of a, uh, a little hole for it to sit into, so to speak. So there was a little bit of a raised edge to it so it wouldn't slide off as easy. Then I add a few details, just the usual sort of screws in there, just to add a little bit of a, a metallic look to it because I'm going to chrome all this. This is going to be really, really shiny chrome and I thought this is going to look so good. Then I just created a separate faceplate because I want to print the logo flat on it. The logo I just found, on, found online is an SVG and ported it in, gave it a bit of depth and attached it to the plate with a couple of extra screws. And then it was pretty much done. So there's me thinking it's going pretty well. But unfortunately, when I printed out the first version of the stand, I noticed that something was wrong with this part and what had happened, I hadn't actually connected it to the bottom part in Blender. So the bamboo had put loads of supports underneath it and it had sort of raised up and looked really messy. And also this slant here, it didn't print very well on a slant, it would just step it. And to be honest, I didn't want to sand all of that. So I had to go back and make sure that that was gonna be printed horizontally, but that had its own problems. And also when they did the first version of the stand, I didn't put ironing on as well. So yeah, that's a, a few big mistakes that cost me 24 hours worth of printing. Okay, so here is the mistake close up. As you can see, that um, area there is raised up. Didn't look like it was in the blender, but clearly it was, and it was just floating on top there. So it's just been printed a load of supports. And as you can see, because I didn't put ironing on and because I've printed that part at an angle, you can see all the steps. So yeah, this isn't good enough. This is going to have to get reprinted. So that's 24 hours wasted. So here's the reprinted one on the uh, cool plate super tack, which is great by the way. Although uh, unfortunately, as you can see from the front corner there, it's lifted. So I can guarantee that would have shrunk and warped. So let's get it off and have a look how bad it is. So after a little bit of cleanup, yeah, you can see the one on the bottom is the new one. The one on the top is the one that had the, the bottom of it printed flat. So yeah, that's pretty warped. Not happy with that, but let's see if there's anything I can do to, to uh, rescue it. So what I'm thinking about doing is just sitting the nameplate, just a little bit proud of the recess. Probably print off some little spaces or something. A bit annoying you can see in the, in the footage there, the, the raised corner, but once the nameplate's on actually, and I could probably just sand off the bottom, um, the rest of the bottom that is flat up to the, the level where the, uh, the, the uh, warping is actually, and that'll just flatten off. But it looks great with um, Arnie on top. So I know you're itching to see it. Let's have some close-ups of the beautiful Arnold Schwarzenegger himself. So as said at the beginning of the video, this guy is gonna need 
virtually no processing whatsoever it's printed so incredibly it's amazing the sculpture is really is the likeness is incredible it's absolutely bang on the detail of the endoskeleton is fantastic there's a little bit of roughage right at the bottom of his chin there but that's fine you can see the benefit of it being hollow as well there it takes off a lot of um, extra printed material that you just don't need to do so yeah this is just going to get a little bit of an undercoat and we can start painting but that's going to have to come in part two because um, we're coming up to time now so I wanted to get this out because um, it might take a week or so to paint and I wanted to get something out this week so it's turned into a bit of a part one part two which could be a good format for me um, even the tops of his ears there look they're nice and neat and just look at how pretty he looks you know what because it's you lot and you've stayed all the way to the end of the video here's some nicer close-ups for you it really is a stunning print an amazing SDL and really brought to life fantastically on the Bamboo A1. So with that complete, let's hand you back to that idiot in the studio. Right, so we're pretty much done. Um, I'll get started painting this guy. Um, one question though, I'm not sure whether to do the chrome part first, then mask it and do the rest, or do the rest, the rest of it first and then um, chrome last. So if you've got any guidance on what might be best, let me know in the comments. Right then, look out for part two. It should be along in the next week. Um, or it might already be here if you're watching from the future. Hopefully it's not an apocalyptic future and you're some kind of revenge crazed cyborg hell bent on seeking me out for doing a piss poor paint job on your pal here. Well, I better make sure I do a damn good job of it then. Because you know what they say, the future's not set, there is no fate but what we paint for ourselves. Catch you next time.